Dr. Fizz, Theoretical Physics, Kepler's Laws. We need to understand Kepler's Laws before we proceed with the Mercury perihelion problem in the next video. Kepler's first law, the law of ellipses. A planet travels around the sun along an ellipse where the sun is at a focus. These are your two focal points. You put the sun at one and the other is empty space. Think of an ellipse as being made with a string. Say we loop a string around two thumbtacks where there's a piece of paper underneath and a cork board. You would have a string also along the bottom here. Put your pen here or a pencil and go all the way around and that's your ellipse. We don't show this extra piece here because I want to emphasize that the sum of the two blue ones here is going to equal 2a. Well let's show that. First of all what's a? A is the semi-major axis. Major axis here, minor axis. B is the semi-minor axis. Semi means half, so A is half the distance across the entire egg, and B is half the distance from the bottom of the egg to the top of the egg. If you take the point P and put it right here on the horizontal axis, then you'll have the blue string go all the way to the edge, and this string here length will be a little piece that doubles back. Take that piece that doubles back and use it over on this side and then you have it that the blue is equal to 2a. When the point P is at the top then the blue lengths are equal. Each one equals a and then a here is the hypotenuse of a triangle where the base is given by the distance from the center to the focal point, f on either side, that is true. So this f squared plus b squared is equal to a squared. By definition, f is a times the eccentricity, where the eccentricity is zero, then these two f points are at the center, and in that case you find that f being zero means a equals b and you have a circle. If epsilon is very close to 1, then it's real close to A and you have a more cigar shaped ellipse. This is the formula for ellipse, the ellipse that we see in high school. If you let Y be 0, then X is plus or minus A when you solve. So when Y is 0, X is plus or minus A. And when x is 0, y is then plus or minus b, since the y squared equals b squared, and that would be plus or minus b. When a equals b, you get your circle, which is then x squared plus y squared equals r squared, the way it's usually written. Well, what about relating b to the eccentricity? Well, a squared equals a squared epsilon squared, which is your f squared plus b squared. So b squared is 1 minus epsilon squared times a squared. Now all this work is necessary because while this is common to see this, it's not easily seen in this form. And I need a polar coordinates form for the ellipse. I'm going to choose the center here at the focal point so that my r is measured away from that point with theta being measured from the horizontal axis in the usual case for polar coordinates. So how do I get this? Well I need to bring this focal point see to my center by a shift. So I use the shift trick. I want to shift this equation here by f and that would be the equation. However, I have to do a lot of algebra to get it into the form that I need here. So let me sketch out to you these steps. They're straightforward, but there's several of them. What you do is you hold off on doing the, the polar coordinate substitution. You just do some algebra first. And the first thing is to get rid of the B using this formula here. So the b squared is then 
the 1 minus epsilon squared times that a squared. And then each step is easy. We'll go step by step. The first one, we're going to multiply both sides by a squared. So the a squared goes away here, goes away there, and it winds up on the right side. The next step is to work out the square here. x squared minus 2 a epsilon x plus epsilon squared a squared. Everything else stays the same. And then the next step is to go ahead and take this piece and subtract it so it's on the right side then factor uh, here you want to uh, bring that a squared out so you have 1 minus epsilon squared multiplying it. Then the next step is to bring this piece over to the right side and then the next piece is to get rid of this denominator by multiplying by it on both sides. You have this on the x squared it frees up the denominator here this already has that factor, so we'll have it squared. And then the factor here shows up multiplying this last term. Then we multiply through, get the x squared minus epsilon squared x squared. And then we take this piece here and bring it way to the other side. And now we notice x squared plus y squared is r squared, the polar coordinates transformation and this is here a perfect square. If you look at this a times 1 minus epsilon squared, see if you square all that you get this. This little piece squared is over here and 2 times multiplying across gets you this. 2 times a epsilon x with the factor 1 minus epsilon squared. Then we notice that we can take the square root, and since r is a positive distance, we take the positive square root. And then here what we do is we subtract epsilon x from both sides. And then we do a little factoring here. We bring out the r, and then we're finished. A lot of steps to get the simple result in polar coordinates, which we will need in our next section. Kepler's second law, the law of areas, the planet sweeps at equal times, equal areas and equal times. The planet sweeps at equal areas and equal times, so equal areas, equal times. That means if it takes one month to go from this point to this point, when you get close to the center body here, you can go faster, and in one month you'll get that, so that the piece of pi here, blue, equals the piece of pi there. Uh, Halley's Comet, for example, may take one year, and I'd go uh, very um, much uh, for us to see, much difference, but then when Halley's Comet is close, it can whip around like in one academic year and then go off on its way. Equal areas, equal times. So here I've set up the differential area element here for a small piece where I have R d theta and this is r, so the area is one-half the base times the altitude. Triangle formula, one-half r times r d theta, one-half r squared d theta. Kepler's second law says in this differential form, calculus form, that the change in area with respect to time is equal to a constant. The third law, Kepler's third law, the law of periods, the cube of the semi-major axis is proportional to the square of the period. I'm going to show you how this works for a circle. Nice simple calculation. For a circle, the semi-major axis equals semi-minor axis, A equals B equals R. And Newton's law of gravity, G M M over R squared, that's the force, equals the mass of the planet going around the sun times acceleration. We assume the mass of the star is so big it doesn't move. We can neglect that movement. It's a little guy. It's moving around. So that's mass times acceleration for a circle. Acceleration is v squared over r. And then here, we're going to uh, replace the velocity with 2 pi r, that's the circumference, over the period. Notice here that little m cancels out. Here, 1r reduces, and this r goes away. 
and then if I square this out I get 4 pi squared r squared over t squared. Now if I bring this r over to the right I'll get the r cubed and I bring the t squared to the left and then I'm going to divide by the 4 pi squared and then have r cubed on one side and gm over 4 pi squared times the t squared on the right and that's the law the cube of the radius is equal to some constant times the square of the period.